Hello, YouTube. This is Cat and Wolf, and we are coming at you with something we're really excited about, actually. This is going to be our anticipation reaction video about the new Dunk. Dune. Dune. The, the, the E looks like a C. The C? A C. A C. Yes. A C. A C. <laughs> So we are super excited about this because I don't know if you guys know this, but Kat here is a little bit of a dunk authority. I, I wouldn't say authority, but I do enjoy it. Yes. Well, she is almost done with the first book of Dune yeah. and she's been reading that in anticipation for the new film starring Willy Wonka in the <laughs> desert people. And the desert people. Willy Wonka in the desert. Willy Wonka <laughs> this time, he he's, defeated, <laughs> he's defeated the chocolate barons. Now he's going after the Baron Harkonnens. <laughs> no. <laughs> first the chocolate, now it's space. Yes, first the chocolate, now the spice. <laughs> but there's, I, we just watched the movie too. So we just watched part one. So we're going to be giving you our reaction to that. What did you think? It's very, like, I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to say it. It's very to the book. Um, everything that is, almost everything that is said in the book is portrayed in the movie. There's some scenes, like there's a party scene that wasn't portrayed that I feel like should have been portrayed because it does show uh, where the, oh my God, I forgot his name already. And we just saw him. The the guy in the the, the Freeman uh Fremen. I would say Freeman. They so the Fremen together. get together with the um, Atreus. Atreides. The Atreides for a big party before, and there are gonna be some spoilers in here for the first movie. So we're assuming that you're like us and you're anticipating and excited about the emergent second movie. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the first one. But there is supposed to be a big party scene before the attack on the Atreides and their spice mines. It's supposed to be the night before. And right. the, the Freeman, what's, what's Fremen. important, Fremen, sorry. That's right. The Fremen, what's important about it is that the Fremen <clears throat> guy, I forgot his name. I'm so mad I forgot his name because he's also really important at the end. He's the one that's like, oh, I know him because of the party. And they, it, it's odd in the movie where they, they're just like, he's like, oh, yeah, him. I know him. That's the Duke's son. Well, well how he, did you know him? <laughs> well, we do see him at the King's Council and he's talking to Duncan Idaho for a little bit before. Right. Yes. But he really gets to know uh, Paul during the party when he literally says, hey, I know a little bit about what's happening and, you know. So this is Benicio Del Toro's character? Yeah. Yeah. Where so. he, he literally at the party, at like the end of the party, because um, some prisoner, not prisoners, some, I can't say, I always, I always confuse them. Um, Sits the, the other people, not the... Not the, the Harkonnens. Harkonnens. No, no, no. The other no. ones that ones that they hire for the emperor. Right. So the emperor's hired guard. Basically. They found some of the emperor's hired guard um, spy spies inside Atreus, uh, Atreides. Oh my God, I hate it. Atreides. Um, so they find some of the emperor's <laughs> hired guard, and they're there to assassinate. They're people. they're they the spies. And during the party, and when they do that, that's when the Freeman comes up, Fremen comes up to Paul and is like, hey, this is the first part of the attack. There's going to be a second attack. And Paul's like, you don't know anything. And he's like, okay. <laughs> oh, really? So yeah. at first, Paul doesn't necessarily believe that they're going to be attacked. Yeah. As quickly or as soon, I should say, as they are. Yeah. So first of all, Paul doesn't really realize he's... Gonna be, they're gonna be attacked. Um, um, but yeah, so first he doesn't realize that the Fremen that's talking to him knows what's going on because he um, was supposed to be one of the spies that the Harkonian, Harkonnen, Harkonnen 
See? The, Fre the Freemen and the Harkonians. Yeah, the Fremens and the Freemans and the Harkonians. That's right. That's right. <laughs> she did just see the movie, by the way. I did. I just can't. I keep fucking fucking up the names. I hate it. Um, <laughs> but the the Fremens, he was supposed to be one of the spies that the uh, Harkins. Harkonnens. Harkonnens, see? Um, so Benicio Del Toro's character was supposed to be a spy. He was supposed to be a spy sent by the Harkonnens, but he ended up getting introduced to Paul and realizing in himself that he is the, I almost called the Madrid, but it's not the Madrid, it's the Medi. My Basically, dad. they're they're desert messiahs. Yeah, he he and his mother are the desert messiahs. Oh uh, well, he is the desert messiah. The mother is the just the yeah, mother. She of the is the messiah. one of the Bitty Jezreel. Yeah, she um, I can't say anything because that's a little spoiler for. Okay, so we're gonna part. we're gonna cut it out there. So, but <laughs> basically, um, that's something that you don't see in the first movie that. That's Cat the here feels like should have been maybe because it would have been a good twist. It's like it's like you you suddenly realize that this is the person that oh wait he was telling the truth he knew and he was you know telling Paul that oh this is really gonna happen and Paul's just like ah, it's a flaw it's it's almost like Paul Paul's character flaw is not believing in in people in a way mm, so he doesn't like trust. Mm -hmm. the Fremen as much as he should mm -hmm. okay well yeah I guess that wasn't conveyed as much um, as it could have been I guess but I mean I feel like so this movie was directed by Denis Villeneuve and he's also the director of movies like Blade Runner 2049 he makes a lot of good movies I think that he you know and he's talked about being a big fan of the books I think he had to sort of choose a way that he wanted to condense this down and well yes some, because some things are always going to get cut yeah because book one is actually well book one of dune quote unquote i had quotes there but you can't see it um she was making quotey fingers i was um book one of dune is so big compared to book two and book three like in the dune book itself so what she means is like in the novel Dune, it's divided into three books and that gets confusing because there's also uh, Dune Messiah, which is the second, second book. book. Yeah. And then there's Children of Dune, which is the third. And so book on book. and so yeah, forth. Yeah, there are a lot of Dune books. <laughs> but that, that, yeah, it's kind of confusing because there are the actual books and then there's the books within yeah, the so first Dune, novel. Dune, the first book, the first novel has three chapters or books in them. And so the first chapter is huge compared to the rest of the, the chapters. And in the movie, they went from book one, or I'm kind of keep saying book one. Well, I'm sorry saying you chapters. Should, you shouldn't say chapter because it has chapters too. Not really. The chapters are like, like itty bitty if you're going to call them chapters. They're okay. like one or two well, pages and then it goes to a different thing. It's just like sure. scene changes in a way. The chapters are like, if you're calling them chapters, they're like scene changes. Oh, okay. like now they're going but from just, a different scene. Just to understand when when you're saying book one in this context, you mean Part within the first two. novel. Yeah. Right. So one within the film. first novel, book one is very long. Yeah, book one's very long. Um, Dune itself is very. It, it's a very thick book. <laughs> it's a thick boy. It's a thick boy, and in the movie they go through for what I. Um, so this is the second time watching Dune and I fell asleep during the first time I watched it. I was very Cat tired. falls asleep during a lot of movies. I do. <laughs> I fell asleep Jeez. yesterday during, um, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z. Z. I fell asleep during a lot. I'm, That's I'm okay. a tired we've, person. We've seen Dragon Ball Z quite a few times. Well, I've seen all of it. You haven't. Well... <laughs> I've seen up to where like Gohan goes to college. I feel like the only thing I've really missed is the Majin Buu saga. Oh, you've missed the Buu saga completely. It's not just Majin Buu. It's the sure. Buu saga. So the Buu saga I have, but that's really the only thing in Dragon Ball Z that I feel like I'm still missing out on. There's a lot of filler between. 
There's that. a lot of there's a lot of college between going on. Cell and <laughs> you know Mai Jin Bu. It's like well, then you get to meet Videl. Right? At least you get to meet Videl and who she is. Sure, but she's important later. But Anyways, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> we're talking about um, this little sleepy cat over here. Yeah, so I fell asleep the first time I watched Dune, mm -hmm. and I missed a lot, a lot of the movie. I fell asleep during the first half, and then I woke up in the middle of the movie and then I fell asleep again and I woke up in the last half of the movie. So in other words, it's a very <laughs> exciting movie. It is. A, <laughs> it's a very good movie. Like I feel, I actually watched, like I said, we just watched this. I actually watched it just now. And even when I was reading the books, I was like, oh, this was in the movie. I don't remember this from the movie, but that sounds like it should be in the movie. <laughs> And it turns out. <laughs> turns out I was just asleep while the movie was going on. Oh, poor girl. <sighs> I'm excited for Dune 2, though. Because yeah. I heard it's going into... From what I saw from Dune 1, um, it's going halfway through Dune, uh, book 2 of Dune and book 3 of Dune. Which is the most exciting parts of Dune, in my opinion. Yeah, Willy Wonka's going to be a little bit older for this one, but, you well, know... he's got a girl old sometime, baby. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But yeah, I don't think he'll be noticeably older between the two movies. I think it'll be pretty much... And I'm sure that they've finished filming this one a little while ago. I'm pretty sure they finished filming it before Wonka. Before yeah. they started that. Because they wanted... It, it's like... Um, I think it was like the Lord of the Rings thing where they wanted him to stay the same age like they did with the Hobbits in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I think they, they filmed probably, all three movies at the same time. They probably the same time. filmed them together yeah. and just released the first one. So the first one was released during the lockdowns. 2021. Mm-hmm. Was yeah. it, was 2021 still in lockdown? I thought it was all yeah, 2020. we basically still in lockdown. There was still like six feet apart and masks. Oh, and yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. And I think you could go to the movie theater at that point, but not a lot of people were. And this one was pretty much direct to streaming with HBO Max. So that was a thing for Which a Which stinks while. a little bit because the streaming version of it, from what I saw, is not good. Yeah, so this one's really worth it if you want to get the Blu-ray. I think we saw the Blu-ray for this at Target. Yeah, for it was like, like 10, ten bucks. bucks. Yeah, well, yeah, we should have gotten this. <laughs> we probably should have. But you know, we that's the thing, is that when it's kind of available still on streaming, it's that question of is it worth it? Is it not worth it? But you know, especially with this one where you have these big, broad, like sort of palettes. You know, there are things that you definitely can tell are, are a little funky when you see it and it's sort of compressed for streaming. Like the thing about streaming is it's 4K, but the bit rate is actually pretty low. So, Spoiler alert, especially that last part of the movie. Right, so when they're in the desert. With the worm like right there where he, you finally see the worm for the first time ever yeah. and it's just blacked out. And I'm like, <laughs> what happened? Like you, like you can see here, that's the worm. That's how the worm's supposed to look. In the streaming version of it, it just looks like a black screen. <laughs> yeah, so those, those dark colors, especially, they're not really, they don't look as good compressed. And there's a lot of that towards the end of the movie where it's just like, a little too difficult to see if you're going to watch it on streaming. There are some things that you're going to miss out on. Yeah. So if you're thinking, do I want this? Do I want to have the physical media or do I want to have a better version of this? I think it's worth it with this movie probably. Well, if you're really into it, yes. Mm -hmm. But you have to be really into it. Especially with the Dune series, you kind of have to be really into it and really into like, I guess the more... I don't want to say spacey version of it, but like, it's, it's not the spacey version, but the, hmm. not philosophical, but it's like the word philosophical, but I'm not sure what I'm trying to say anymore. Okay. Like the mind aspect of it. You have to the be- The mental into, aspect. Yeah. So, cause there's a lot, a lot of like the mental stuff going on with Psychological. Paul. There you go. Psychological stuff going on with Paul, where he, you know, what what does the spice have to do with it? Because you mm -hmm. can obviously see this even the doctor forgot his name too, the traitor. I'm gonna call him the traitor. Oh yeah. Um, even he said the spice, you know, does something to you. You gotta kind of feel bad for that guy though. He's like, they've he got my wife and they're <laughs> like taking her apart like a doll, and that's that's like 
we really see how cruel the Harkonnens are and how mm-hmm. creepy, you know. And there's definitely some stuff from the book that they don't go they into. They do not go into it all. And I don't know if we <laughs> should say that or not, but, like, I don't... I, this channel, you can, but I, I don't know if people are going to... Yeah, so the Harkonnens are not just sadistic. They're also kind well, of... just the Baron. Not all just of the them. Bar- well, who knows? I mean, I, I think a lot of them From are what it's said of... in the book, it's just the Baron. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. They all have a, a vibe, you know, but, but in the book it goes a little bit more specifically into his... Especially, it, it, I mean, they might they might say it in, in the new movie because there's like a, a whole thing of that where his second nephew is involved. Not not what not that way. I shouldn't I shouldn't say that. His second nephew is involved in trying to do something. Ladies and gentlemen, he's guy. into the fellas. <laughs> yeah, the young, <laughs> the young fellas. Yes. So his nep spo- spoiler alert: if you haven't read the book, he's t- and I'm not sure if they're going to show it in the movie. The so, young guys. so his nephew is trying to kill him, mm-hmm. the Baron. So to try and do so, this is spoiler terror. I said yeah. spoiler. Yeah. Okay, but I, I don't think they're going to show it in the movie. I don't think they're going to show it in the movie. That's why I'm okay. like. Well, you never know what they will and won't. But That's true. They should show it in the movie because it's a point of him trying to dethrone. Dethrone the Baron. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, really fun, like, kind of politicking and, and sort of uh, that Game of Thrones style stuff that <laughs> I like, keep thinking about really... Harkonnen. Har- Har- Harkonnen? Yeah. Harkonnens are, are Dothraki. <laughs> I keep doing that. I mean, it's fair. I mean, they're very Dothraki-like in some ways. I think they're a lot more decadent than yes, the Dothraki. Definitely, but in my mind, they're the same. In my mind, they're Dothrakians. <laughs> yeah, okay. I see it. I see it. But yeah, so we're excited. What did you think of, you know, a little backstory here on Kat? She's not a big fan of the Zendabu. I, yeah, I don't like her all that much. And that's just a me thing. And it's just because I don't like the way she acts. I think she acts, her acting isn't the best when it comes to certain things. So I don't like her as Mary Jane, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't like her in certain things. But I do think for, if you don't know her name, her name is Chai or Chennai in the movie. I don't think they said her name yet. I'm not 100% sure. Um, They should have because they said it in the book. Um... She does good for her, but I think there could have been someone, in my opinion, better. Mm. I also think dream casting. Who would you Who would you want to see in that role? If If you were the casting, oh, I don't know director. actresses like that. Oh my god, I don't know names like that. You know, I don't know names like that. <laughs> A little bit. Um, mm. I don't know her name, but she's from um, the new uh, the new movie we saw. Uh, we were poor things. Oh, Emily Stone. Emma Stone, yeah. Emma Stone. I Emma think Stone. she. I think her. She would. She would have been. A little perfect. old for that character, don't you think? They could have made her younger with makeup. Sure, I guess. But it's it's the fact that I don't know Zendaya. I just it might be the fact that I just don't like Zendaya. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not your favorite. It might just be that. Jason just Momoa was really good in this. I do think he was a perfect fit for uh, Idaho. And I do think. Duncan Idaho. And I do think, because I keep forgetting his name, but I remember him as the old man, because that's what Paul called him. And I think that was a perfect fit for him, too. Who is that actor? I forget. I forgot his name, but he's, he's really, really good as, as the old man. I don't like what they did, or how they changed it. Mm, from in the book. From in the book. I don't know if you want to say that, but I don't like how they changed it. If you know, you know, but I don't like how they changed it. <laughs> okay. So one for the bookies out there. You know, if you know, you know. <laughs> I don't know because I haven't read the book yet. I'm interested. It, it sounds like an interesting book. It's very good. Also, the the I feel like the scene where... Um, Paul is 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 going through his um 
mental breakdown <laughs> where he's seeing the future the yeah. first time yeah. where he's going through his mental breakdown. Do you mean when he's in the tent? Yes. When he's, when in, he's the in the tent. tent with his mother. Yeah. yeah. I feel like in the book, he was said to have gone a little more crazy than in the movie. And I was kind of hoping he'd go a little more crazy, just a mm. little more. Not, not, not that he wasn't already going, but just wish he went a little more into the, uh, where he screamed, get away from me. You did this to me. Mm. I feel like it could have been like, get away from me. You did this to me. <laughs> I don't want to scream. I, gonna feel like, I like, feel like he kind of did. He kind of, he kind of, I just wanted a little, you know, he went it. into his, uh, his, his, the voice. Yeah. You know, yeah. Which is what he was supposed to do. So. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like, so this, I think is like sort of a trademark of this director, Danny Villeneuve. And you see this in Blade Runner. 2049 it's like a lot of the emotional stuff is really restrained with him he sort of mm -hmm. makes it really tight and very it's almost more effective in a way when it's understated and he does that a lot with violence too the violence in his movies is usually really fast really impactful and then it's sort of over with and then then there's sort of a feeling that the dust is settling around it there's a there's a there's a sort of big pause after a moment of like fast, intense mm -hmm. violence that that he's sort of known to oh, put on. Like when down. when they did with when a, the Atreides was first attacked, and then they went directly to the tent scene, which was more calm. And then when he had his mental sure, yeah, mental yeah. Violence. There there was there was also in that yeah with his. Um, with his mother on the plane, mm -hmm. you know, all the violence very fast and furious and then and then sort of ends very abruptly. Yeah. Well, Which, the same thing happened with the worm because he was like, oh, this is flat land and it was really calm. And then suddenly just like that, you know? Yeah, I think it can be really effective, but there were parts, especially near the end, and this goes into spoilers for the first movie too, which I guess we've been doing all along. But <laughs> Kind of, yeah, this is kind of a spoiler for the first movie. You haven't seen it, watch it. <laughs> Yeah, it's so been out for a good little bit now. By the by, the end of the movie, there were some some scenes going into him having to sort of do that blood for blood duel uh, or fight against one of the Fremen. Um, you were saying that you felt like that was a little bit rushed. It was that whole scene where it's the worm, the worm up until that point. I guess there's a whole scene in the book, and I guess I'm just used to the book. Where they're, you know, after the worm comes up and you see the worm for the first time, like really see the worm, they're supposed to climb up that mountain to the tip top of the mountain. And then they're supposed to find like an oasis type of thing where they're supposed to find like, you know, a pool of water, not big, but just like a little pool of water and green, a little bit of greenery everywhere. And then the Fremen is supposed to step out of the shadows and be like, you're not supposed to be here. And it's only one at first. And that's who Jessica then fights, you know, mm. <clears throat> which is the leader. She fights the leader of the that that Fremen group. Which is the Benicio del Toro uh, character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, wins. And he's like, I didn't know you were wielding one, blah, 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 blah. And then he tells his men to step out of the shadows while um, Paul was going up. He was supposed to be up into the roof, almost to the roof of the this cave looking thing. Um, where Chen, I want to say her name is Chinese. <laughs> I keep wanting to say it's Chinese. I'm going to say it's Chinese. I'm pretty sure it said something different. Um, or Chenny. So Chinese was supposed to be at the top, like the actual roof of the cave. And she was supposed to be a, a thing you don't see until. The very end which they did in the movie you don't see her until the very end and he does have those visions throughout the whole book where he's seeing little bits and pieces of her um to the very end where he's like come out and then everyone comes out and then she's still hidden until she he's like jenny come out <laughs> and then she comes out and then he's mm -hmm. she's like i wasn't gonna let you kill my friends i hope you're aware of that mm -hmm. and well, she said it differently, but basically that. And so he's like, huh? Just showing that he, she kind of had the drop on him, but in the book, 
it's more played as he knew that she had no, to drop on him. He didn't know. He had no idea. Only the 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 what's his name? But the, you said she tells him to. No, no, no. The Fre- Fremen, the the chief Fremen, okay. tells her to come down. Like she knew, he knew she was there. Okay, but Paul didn't. But know Paul didn't there. know, and then he was. She was like, "Yeah, this is the wrong. This you took the so the harder was- way up. Took the harder way up, and then he's like." No, and he's she's like, let me show you, and then they go down together. Interesting. So she's kind of showing that she's skeptical that he's actually their mm-hmm. messiah because he chose the harder way to get up the yep. mountain. Yep. Instead of what would have been obvious to her. Yeah, because she knows the desert, so she would believe the messiah would know, know the desert. Fair enough. Yeah. It, interesting. Interesting choices that they made there to like sort of downplay that in the movie. And I guess there's always going to be things that you have to cut for time or that aren't going to make it into the final presentation, you know, or that are going to end up on the cutting room floor of the movie itself. But, you know, I think overall, I wouldn't have changed too much of, I wouldn't have elongated the time they spent in the desert. The thing about the desert is it's like... Well, I would have elongated that scene where they... Because also in that scene, it, well, it, the first two pages, and then it goes to a different part of that scene, quote unquote, um, is when the chief Fremen talks to Jessica, mm. like by himself. And she's like, I can't basically like, I can't be your woman. And he's like, I wasn't trying to make you my, you're my woman. We don't do that. We don't force girls here. But if you want to, we can basically. Oh, so a little love interest developing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole thing also where she, in her, there's a lot of things in the book where you, the the characters talk in their heads, like you can hear what they're thinking about or see what they're thinking about. And in her head, it's constantly, well, my baby girl think, what would she think? You know, I have Mm -hmm. a pregnant, well, what would she think? Mm -hmm. She's really worried about her baby. Yeah. Uh, as you should be when you're being hunted through the desert. I mean, yes, but <laughs> she's, I guess, in a way, she's trying to fix the problem she did with Paul in a way on her baby. So she's trying to make up for how hard things have been for Paul, you yeah. think? With her, with her newborn. With her, with her baby girl. Interesting. Yeah, I, th- I think there's a lot to look forward to in the new movie. It's going to be interesting to see how they sort of tie it all with what they've already established in the first movie. And I'm just, uh, I'm excited to see it. What do you think? I'm very excited to see it. And I think it's going to be really good. Um, and if they go with what they did in the books, then there's going to be a lot of emotional stuff that is mm. going to be coming up. So it's going to be very... It's going to be a tearjerker. Between Timothy and, and Zendaya. <laughs> um, it's cute. Well, we've got that to look forward to. I'm excited to see the mo- new movie. Uh, I really liked Dune Part 1. I, I like a lot of the stuff that Denny Villeneuve Is has. he also the director of the second one, too? Uh, yeah. So he directed both of them. Good. And it's, it's going to be exciting to see where he goes with it. I, I'm a fan of a lot of his movies. I, I think he did Sicario, too. Great movie. Um, did Blade Runner 2049. That's I love that movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, we both like that one a lot. And maybe we'll talk about Blade Runner sometime. The yeah. two Blade Runner movies. That's but good. for now, I hope we left you guys with something to think about. I hope you're as excited to see This Is Us. Yeah, I hope you're very excited. And I uh, appreciate you guys for coming by, stopping by. And uh, anything else you want to say before I shut this down? <laughs> Till next time, like it, subscribe to it, smash that bell. Comment for more. (laughs) Comment. Leave comments. Tell us how amazing we are and how you would pronounce these things or mispronounce them. Shush your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) And I will see you guys in the next video. I'll probably post something asking if they want a scary game or something else. Oh, yeah. oh, maybe I'll have some friends on. We'll see. Bye for now. Bye.